Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, today's tutorial is the first tutorial, or technically it's the second tutorial, but with the index one in my uh, <laughs> End Curses game series where I make, I'm make i going to be making a snake game. Uh, in the first tutorial, I just kind of showed you guys what the game was kind of going to look like, like a proof of concept. Again, it wasn't like 100% what it's going to be because th the code's going to kind of evolve as we... Um, move along with tutorials, I might add things or change things, but generally what, what we were going to be doing for the series, I explained that in the last video, you should go check that out, put a little card to that now. Also, if you haven't um, checked out my other End Curses tutorial series, I recommend watching those first, because um, this is not meant to be like an introduction to End Curses, it's kind of going to be applying concepts we've already learned, so it'd be better if you go watch those tutorials, I'll put a little link to the playlist up, up there uh, as well. So now let's get started. Um, so first off, I've just created a shell program um, for the time being that uh, essentially just contains uh, include end curses. I've created a file called board.hpp. It's just a shell of um, <clears throat> what we're going to be building today. We're going to be talking about the game board today. We're going to be building that up <clears throat> mainly. So you'll see I've created a folder called source and I put board.hpp in there. Um, I've also created a make file, which I don't, don't always show in my tutorials, but for this tutorial series, uh, for this, I'll show you guys what my make file looks like to simplify things. Um, so if you're not familiar with make files, I'm not gonna explain it, but you can at least see what I'm using for my make file. Um, so right now we just have the basic, you know, start end curses. I always like to do a refresh, so that way we start out with a blank uh, screen. Uh, and then right before we do our end win, I usually do a get char just so we can see what we're doing. <clears throat> so today we're going to be building up the game board, which is essentially just like the outside of, you know, the, the border of the, the snake game. Um, so I usually like to prototype what I'm going to be building within um, the main file first, and then I'll kind of port this code over to board just so we can get an idea of what we're, you know, we can quickly put something together and then we can um, put place it into the board class. So... Um, to start off with, how would we exactly go about making the game board? So we kind of have to think about the dimensions, how we want it to look. Um, I think I'm going to make the game board its own window. So uh, what we'll do is um, we'll want to create a window. And the way I'm going to set this window up is I'm going to try and center it in the middle of the screen. Um, and we're going to have to come up with the dimensions for it. So we'll play around with that. But uh, so what we're going to do here is if we want to center it in the screen, we need to know the size of the screen. So there's a couple ways to go about getting the size of the terminal screen, but um, my favorite way to do it is to get the max yx of the standard screen. So um, we'll do get max yx um, for the standard screen, and I actually have to create some variables first. So we'll do int uh, x max y max. Um, so y max x max. Jeez, can't type today. Um, so now that we have the max yx, we can actually create a window that is uh, centered in the screen. So what we'll do is we'll say window star um, board win, um, and we're going to set that equal to new win. And so again, the first um, parameter is the height. So in this case, we want the height to be, I don't know, we have to come up with some value for our board. I'm just going to use 20 now. Um, and because we want it to be a square, we'll do 2020. I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, but for now, we'll just say 2020 because we want it to look like a square. <clears throat> and then um, we have to give it where we're going to place it. So in order to figure out how to center it in the screen, what you're going to do is technically, if you wanted to find the center, you would do X mat or uh, this is the height. So or the uh, Y we're currently putting in the row. Um, so if we wanted to figure out the center of this, we would take the entire height and divide it by 2. That would be the center. So we'll start with that. So we'll say y max divided by 2. But then we also have to account for the fact that this thing has some height to it. So in order to account for that, we're going to take y max divided by 2. And then we're also going to subtract from that um, half of the height. So half of the height would be 10 in this case, um, like that. And then we're also going to do the same thing for the x. So you can do the same calculation. You do x max divided by 2, and then you subtract 10 again. So that should center uh, our window in the uh, middle of the screen. Now that we've done that, um, our game board is just going to have a very basic border on the outside. So we can just use the border function. 
uh, provided by, uh, or sorry, not uh, border. We're going to use the box function, which is provided by end curses. You supply it with a window. In this case, ours is board win. Um, and then the uh, values for the sides, but I'm just going to use zero because we want the standard board. Um, and now that we've done that, we're going to refresh our window so that we can actually see what we've done. So with all that, let's do a make and run like that. Um, I've called my program main. You could call it snake, whatever you want. I'm just standard. I first thing I do is I create a, a function or a class called or a, sorry, a file called main uh, whenever I start a new project. So that's just my standard. But so if we do a make and run, you'll look at it and you're like, what the heck? That's not a square at all. Um, and now we, we now we have to talk about the fact that terminals aren't it's not like pixels so we're not dealing with pixels here mm -hmm. pixels are the same height as they are width but in this case as you can see when we highlight a section here it's going to change depending on your font but um in my case it looks like the height of a, a pixel quote unquote a, a cell is about two and a half times or maybe three times the size of the width so even though we've put 2020 these are taller than they are wide so it's not going to be a perfect square so we have to compromise. We either have to make it have slightly different dimensions so it's not even, or we have to make it look like a square. Like So if you, we can increase this dimension so that it looks like a square, but then it's not exactly, it isn't an actual square. It'll look like a square, but technically it's a rectangle because it's wider than it is tall, for instance. So I know that's a little confusing, but what I'm going to do actually is, it's always good for any sort of constants to define them up here. I'm going to define some constants to represent our board dimensions. So I'm going to create a, a define a constant called board dim. And this is going to be the quote unquote uh, length of each side. Um, so we'll call it 20. So if we wanted to do uh, the same exact thing we've already done, just throw a board dim in here like this. And in order to generalize this little length code we've written, uh, instead of doing minus 10, we do board dim divided by two. Um, we can do that for both of these, like so, board dim divided by two. Okay, so uh, I've blown up the text so that you can see better, but it also makes it hard to scroll. So um, for right now, that's kind of what we have, y max divided by two minus board dim divided by two, x max divided by two minus board dim divided by two. So this will produce the same exact code we already have. Uh, whoops. So to produce the same exact thing, um, but now we get to play around with uh, making it look more like a square. So I've, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define two, which are uh, dimensions, which are the width and height. So I'll do board, uh, I guess I'll do rows. Um, so board rows is going to be equal to board dim. I'm pretty sure, yeah, because we want, there should be less rows than columns because the columns are thinner, so you need more of them. So our board rows is just going to be equal to our board dim, but our board columns is going to be equal to our board dim. And I found that a value of about 2.5 gets you to what something that looks pretty close to a square. It might be a little bit less or a little bit more than 2.5, but um, now what we're going to do is instead of board dim for both of the width and height, I'm going to use board rows for the uh, height and board calls for the width. I'm looking at board now and for some reason that word doesn't, it looks like it's spelled wrong. I don't know if you guys ever have that. To me it looks like it's spelled wrong, but it's definitely, that's how you spell board. Um, so now we're also going to do uh, for the height, we got to subtract board rows divided by two. And for the width, we got to subtract board calls divided by two. Okay. So now if we make and run our code, we'll see that looks much more like a square. And this is what I was talking about. It looks like a square, but technically there's way more columns than there are rows. So it's not really a square. In my opinion, it's good to compromise. I think it's an okay compromise to look like a square because um, it doesn't really matter that much if the board is actually a square. Um, I'm going to actually lower the sizes of this board a bit. It's kind of big. Uh, so I'll do something like, I don't know, 17 for the board dimension. Uh, it's a little smaller. Okay, so that that's good. So this is kind of the, the first step in making our sneak game. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this code and actually put it into our board class. So that was just kind of like my prototyping phase. 
what we can do now is we can go over to our board class and we can uh, first create a, a constructor. So basic constructor. And what we're going to do um, for this board, I think we're basically just going it, to, it's not going to take any parameters yet. I'm just going to have it basically use this code. Uh, we're going to change this and build on this as we go along for sure. But um, to start out with, what we're going to do is pretty much just paste that code in here, but then we also are going to create some member variables. So I'm going to create a um, private variable for the window. So I go uh, board win. And uh, I think that's all we'll need for now. Um, yeah, so like I said, as we go on, we'll probably uh, update this code a bit. But uh, for now, we'll just copy and paste what we just created into here. Now, oh, actually, what we should do instead is we should have uh, the user supply the board dimension. So um, what we'll do is we'll do board, we'll have them supply an int, and we'll have them give it uh, the height and the width. So we'll say um, the height of it and the width of the board. And then we'll also create some member variables for that. So height, width, like that. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll go in here and we'll say the new win is the height and the width. And then we'll have to change these values as well. Height, uh, width. And then we'll also want to make sure that we set this height equal to height and this width. Width like that. All right. Now that we've built, put that into our board.hpp class, um, our board.hpp file, uh, we can go back to our main file and actually construct a board. So we'll say board, um, board, because we're not creative at all. Um, and then we'll pass it our board, board rows for the height and the board board calls for the width. Um, and one other thing we should do is we should add our board.hpp file to our make requirements. So source slash board.hpp. This will just check to see if we've made any changes to board.hpp. And um, if we have, it'll make sure to remake the code. So um, go back over to main and let's make and run this now. And as you can see, we get the same exact result because we just copy and pasted the code over. Um, again, this is just, we're going to build on this board class. For now, this is very basic, um, but this is, you know, the starting point. We've got to have a board in order to put the snake in. So, um, yeah. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Um, I hopefully have the next one coming out soon. Um, but uh, hope this whetted your appetite and... Uh, if you liked it, please comment, rate, subscribe, um, and I will see you guys in the next one.